It's favoring it. Roddick opens this quarterfinal. 15 months. That's amazing. His first service games won 71 of 75. It's that first serve in. He's almost tough. It's the toughest to beat. And he starts with a couple of bombs. 79 aces coming into the match. Not close to Ivo Karlovich's 121. 27. 28 later in August. He has 28 career titles. What's made Roddick so tough in this tournament, Dick, is not just the first serve, where he's 81% effective, but his second serve, where he's 63% winning. He's only been broken four times in four rounds. First volley from Roddick flies long. And Roddick's first serve percentage is so high now under the tutelage of his coach, Larry Stefanke. And his second serves, they average 100 miles an hour. And he still only had four doubles. Opening game. Here's the numbers coming into the match. Look how few errors Andy has made. Man, Chilich's numbers are bigger in winners, but they're a lot bigger in errors. He's basically going to try to dictate as much as possible. He's, that's what he's going to do. It's more. It's pretty risk reward with this kid, and he's learning quickly how to do that well. For Andy Roddick. You look at his numbers and you know what he's saying? He's saying, I'm here. I'm not going to beat myself. Try beating me. He'll be the aggressor, but uh, Chilich, despite the fact he hasn't served as well as Roddick, in fact, uh, first serve percentage is the lowest of the final eight, 54%. There's Larry Stefanke, the coach of Roddick, the last year and a half. He first uh, told Roddick he was going to have to lose 10, 15 pounds, which he's done. He's worked on his backhand. Trying to win his second major. And Chilich, like Roddick, opens with an ace. And Dick, that stat you just gave us about Chilich having the lowest percentage of first serves in is very surprising from a 6'6 guy that actually serves with a little bit of kick on his serve. That's a big area he can improve. Roddick broken four times in the four matches of this championship. Chilich 12 times. And the double fault. 15 only. Just 21 years of age, the youngest of the final eight. his fourth Australian Open made it to the fourth round the last two years and now to the quarterfinals and what you hear about Chilich despite the fact he's young he's unflappable he carries his emotions well doesn't celebrate the highs overly nor does he uh, Drowned in the lows. Very heady player, too, for, for someone so young. The older guys, veterans like Von Lubicic, go to him and ask him about the younger players. Yeah, so each man holds easily one all. One game.
Levitating. For a guy six foot six, just watch the discipline of Marin Cilic when he comes to the net. He bends his knees like no other player on tour. Yes, and that's where he's got a distinct edge in movement chip, Marin Cilic. Long and lanky, as Darren said, but boy, he, he moves like a sh much shorter man. Roddick in an early hole of 30. Well, it's the big holiday for our Australian friends, Australia Day. Sadly, their final two competitors dismissed from this championship yesterday, Samantha Stozer, Leighton Hewitt. So on Australia Day, center stage belongs to a Yank and a Croat. And the winner will meet Andy Murray or Rafael Nadal to play tonight. It's an important game here for Andy Rollick. You can already see the players managing the breeze at this end. Chilich hitting with a lot of spin. His coach Bob Brett and Andy Rollick really flattening out the ball against the breeze. Brett and Aussie, former coach of Boris Becker and Goran Ivanisevic. Ivanisevic, a mentor of the man returning, Chilich. Bob Brett's a little guy. He's coached Ivanisevic 6'4", Anchard 6'5", Chilich 6'6". Chilich earning a break point. Constructed that point very well. To put a little extra on that forehand, flew wide. That's the side also, Dick, that can break down for Chilich. I think you'll find that Roddick will probably direct most of his attention at Chilich's forehand. A lot of balls to the middle of the court is going to be a good play for Andy. Second break point for Chilich. Chilich. Oh, when Bob Brett first got hold of Marin Chilich, 15, he already had Brett's had a, a terrific backhand as his best stroke, but they've been working hard on that forehand. And Chilich looks to hit it a lot. Again, he's a he's a riskier, it's a much riskier forehand than Andy Roddick's. He goes for it. 
He drives it. Chilich dictating that point, but unable to find that backhand up the line. Yes. Already, Mary Carrillo, good example of what uh, you were expressing about the different style. Chilich, very smooth, effortless in his stroke making. You can just feel the physical energy from Roddick's end. Roddick thought he had an ace. Carlos Ramos, Portuguese umpire, calls for the review. Second serve. Here's that big drive off the forehand side. It's become such a better shot for Chilich in the last year. Roddick not turning any cheap points with a serve in this game. Another break point. Yes. Chilich challenges that call. Apparently not. Just wide. Big second serve there from Andy Roddick. That's going to be really important for him as well because Chilich easily gets the Roddick second serve into play. The big guy gets on top of it before the kick gets above his shoulder. Being a little more aggressive on the second serve will be good for Andy. That was a 110 off the line. There's the big serve well aimed. That was a 135. You know, he's he's been clocked at 155. Though. And again, speed guns vary, but that's the, the biggest any guy has ever served. But he's taken that back a bit and gone much more for percentage placement now. And that's why he's gotten so much tougher. His first serve percentage in the last year has gone up 10%. Stefanke was talking about the fact that it just maybe it's the third shot. After the return, it's that next shot by Roddick where he can improve and be better. That uh, the good players can time the rocket serve. Game. A la Roger Federer. Got a big ace, and that was a terrific hold by... Yeah, we're going to have a challenge by Chilich. But if this is... An ace, it's a terrific hold by Roddick, saving three break points. Wow. Oh, it is not an ace. Look at that. <laughs> Sands getting a kick out of Singh. So, so. Much that shot has to be enlarged to prove that it was out. Please. This is a lot of Thank you. pitches thrown this early from Roddick. Please, it's not a change over. Would you sit down as quickly as possible? Any seat for now? Thank you. Announcement by Ramos to try to get the spectators to please take a seat. And he uses that slice served into the body. And he does hold. Wipes away three break points. 2 1 on serve. Both men with their eyes on a semi-final berth of this 2010 Australian Open Championship. We're live from Melbourne, nearly 3.30 on a Tuesday afternoon. Chilich 
After three chances to break Roddick in that last game, serves at 1 2. May have hit an out ball there. So far, his venturing to the net has not been productive. Chilich announcing that he is after the top 10 players since the U.S. Open. He's beaten five of them. is impressive. He's beat Andy Murray, Nikolai Davidenko, Rafael Nadal, Fernando Verdasco, and in his last uh, match here at the Australian, Del Potro. So those are <laughs> big scalps. So Chilich uh, proving that he belongs in the top 10. At least he's very close to entering the top 10. He is seated 14. He's playing in the quarterfinal here against all the big guys. Five years ago, he lost in the quarterfinals of the Junior Australian Open to Donald Young. In fact, he finished number two in the world behind Young, who's now struggling, lost early here to Luke Hewitt. That whole generation, Del Potro, Chilich, and Murray. Donald Young, way behind. He's got to step up. He's not nearly as big and tall as some of these guys, but he's got to get much more physical. He, he looks like a, he still looks like a little boy compared to these guys. Yeah, Bob, it's kind of shocking when you consider that four years ago in the juniors, Young was number one in the world, this man number two, and now four years later, he's moving in the top 10 of the big boys and Young struggling. point played by Roddick and he has a break point we're going to see Andy Roddick play that slice backhand down the middle of the court all to the forehand a lot today Dick that's a great play against Chilich not giving him any pace to work with or angle and something that he could have done less of against Fernando Gonzalez because Gonzalez he murders that shot that's what Chilich had problems with against the young Aussie Tomic that off-pace stuff. That was the first five-setter that Marin Tillich played. A three-hour and 48-minute match against Tomic. And then he had a four-hour and 38-minute ma minute match against Del Potro. Can you imagine playing a, ma a match of, you know, of that high quality for over four and a half hours? And then in the press conference afterwards saying that uh, he has good adrenaline. He, he'll get the one-day refreshment and uh, be back with his best stuff, meaning today and against Roddy. Three aces now for Chilich and a point for two all. And so it is, two all. 
Now, folks, you can catch a Big Ten SEC doubleheader, the ESPN Super Tuesday, first at 7. The Spartans and the Wolverines for bragging rights in Michigan. And then at 9 Eastern, the phenom John Wall of Kentucky will test his game against the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Super Tuesday presented by KFC as part of ESPN U Campus Connection on ESPN. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Maybe it's just the holiday atmosphere, but first four games of this match played with not a lot of intensity, just feeling each other out, these two men. Roddick the seventh seed, Chilich the 14th. has survived break points against this herb it's two all quarterfinals of the Australian Open the winner advances to the final four and will play either Andy Murray or Rafa Nadal the defending champion they'll be engaged tonight here on this court Rod Laver Arena in Melbourne Park Justine Anna continues her comeback story as she wins today and Zheng Ji of China will be her opponent in the semifinals. The first two women through to the last four. Let me for serve. That serve slicing from outside in just clipped the sideline. 30 love. That's that's just such such good smart serving from Roddick. He's getting a lot in because he's not be trying to blast him and just so much better position placed in the box. Ah, that then one he, too. Then he comes back with 121 mile an hour serve wide. 40 mm -hmm. love. Two aces for Roddick. It's just he can just hit every corner now. Even the rangy Chilich unable to get a racket on that one. Oh. And a love game for Roddick on serve three two. Australia Day down under major tennis action. Welcome back to the 2010 Australian Open, presented by Franklin Templeton Investments. Marin Cilic, the 21-year-old Croat, and American Andy Roddick in this quarterfinal at Rod Laver Arena. They're on serve. 2-3, both men with a chance to break, but the server able to battle out of trouble. Roddick, in fact, out of three break points in his one-all game. Andy Roddick, with his win already at Brisbane now, a title this year, that means 10 consecutive years he's won at least one tour title. The only other man who can make that claim, Roger Federer, he's won at least once in the last nine years, and of course a big full season ahead for him to make it 10 straight. Country boy is Chillage from a town of 3,500. Small mountain town. In fact, the name of the, the town is means between the mountains. He grew up 
in Chile during a very repressed time communist regime, Joseph Tito. Things are not easy. His, uh, his parents owned vineyards and grew tobacco. And with the fall of the regime, the town he's from, as we have a look, that's why the town he's from became famous worldwide when six children in Marin's town said that they'd witnessed an apparition of the Virgin Mary. So it became this huge place for pilgrimages. And then when the war broke out in Bosnia and Herzegovina in 92 to 95, the neighboring villages of Chilich's around surrounding Chilich, they were all destroyed and his was miraculously unscathed. He started playing tennis. His father wanted him and his brothers to play sports. In fact, that one tennis court was built in his little mountain town and he was one of the first kids on it. Yeah, when he was born, there were no courts in that little town. He started winning local tournaments started going to the big city of Zagreb, and that's where Goran Ivanizovic, the, the 2001 Wimbledon champion, got his first look at him. He was asked to check out all the young talent, and he saw a 13-year-old, skinny little kid with a great-looking backhand, terrific court sense. Started hitting with him. Chilich said he couldn't believe he got to hit with this national hero. And Ivan Isvich, of course, had been coached by Bob Brett, the Aussie, who's coached so many good players. Of course, at that time, Ivan Isvich, a national hero, had won Wimbledon, finally, in 2001. Jammer. Three all. Bob Brett had him for two weeks in his summer, his summer camp, his, his academy in San Remo. Two weeks in the summer. And knew that this kid had the goods because he was such a hard worker and absorbed things so quickly. And Bob said he was a very solid 15-year-old. He could move a player around the court and dictate points, especially with his backhand, but he said he didn't have any power. So they started work. By the way, the Williams sisters are in action today as you look at Bob Brett's uh, notable players with whom he has worked. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good uh, company there, huh? Yes. Bob Brett and Larry Stefanke. I mean, that's why this will be a very intelligent match. This guy, he coached me, even. He did. Bob Brett did. When he was, si I've known Bob since Bob was 17 years old. He's just a little older than I am. And he worked at the Port Washington Tennis Academy under my very... The late, great Harry Hotman, who coached myself and the McEnroe brothers and some Vitas Carolinas. And he was so much, he just absorbed everything from Mr. Hotman. In fact, if you'd hit a good shot on his practice court, he'd grab his chest the way Mr. Hotman did if you did something <laughs> special. That's great. We mentioned that uh, out at Margaret Court, Venus and Serena Williams, the defending doubles champion at work, they won the opening set, six games to four, but they're down a break in the second set to uh, Matic Sands and Jan, another fine Chinese player. Flatness for seven. Fifteen. 
These 15,000 spectators so quiet today. Maybe they've already celebrated. They've already done their Australia Day. They're just sitting back watching this theater. Trying to figure out for whom they're going to cheer. Or maybe just to applaud good tennis. Good serve up the middle to Radical. No break of service in this opening set. It's 4-3. Darren Cahill, the Kenberg here at Rod Labor Arena. Out at Margaret Court is our Hall of Famer, Pam Schreiber. How's that doubles action going? Well, it's actually a fascinating quarterfinal match between the two seeds. The Williams sisters, of course, play their quarterfinal uh, singles tomorrow. They're taking on Bethany, Maddox Sands, and Yan Zi of China. And Maddox Sands and Yan are up three love, a break in the second set, and at four all in the first set. Nothing in that first set. They were broken. Uh, the Williams sisters finally broke through, but Serena. Serena just dropped serve, so Venus serving, trying to at least keep it within one break. Roddick is telling you. All right, Pam, we'll follow the action there. Andy Roddick has challenged a call that was good and would be an ace if confirmed. And is. Number 54 for Chillich. surprised he made a challenge on that first point because he walked up to the mark and he saw that the mark was good and walked straight to the aid court. I don't know why he put his hand up to challenge. He's wasted him now. Nice hands from the big Croat. Mm. Real cat and mouse game out here at the moment. You know, the one thing that worries me with Chilich is he's had a few opportunities to shorten the point and he hasn't unloaded on balls and really keeping Andy Roddick in these baseline rallies. I'm not sure if he's trying to get to Andy's legs or not, but if this turns into a scrap, that's a big advantage to Roddick. There he so took a you. full spin. Spirited forehand swing. That's about the first one, Dick. Just missed 30 all. You're at 3 4 opening set. Wow, 15 unforced errors already from Chilich's end. Oh. Roddick's hit, not hitting real hard and flat, and Chilich is having to. Create his own pace on those. It's just what Tomic did against Chilich. That kind of stuff is a tough play for him. He's a rhythm player, Chilich. Those slice backhands were coming to hitting the net. And a, a couple of years ago, you know, Roddick has been to the semis here four times, but a couple of years ago, he didn't even have a one-handed slice backhand. That one came up short, 40-30. Point for four all. Yeah, 
Yeah, this opening set, building in drama. Who's going to take this all important opener? Who's going to take that one tonight? Oh, is that going to be some match? Murray and Nadal. We'll have that one for you live. Love to see you. William sisters held in that love three game, so it's Let's three one Let's to Jan and Maddox Sands in the second set. Williams took the first. Did you expect to see this many backhands, Darren? Slice backhand after slice backhand. No, uh, it's, again, it's a very good way to play against Chilich. Make him hang, make him create himself. Yeah, that's... He's pretty good when you give him a target. And Andy Roddick's a pretty big target up there. He moves so well for 6'6". Six, six. He had plenty of time to go after this one. It's only one for seven at the net. Roddick. Chilich is six for six. Big difference. And the big serve comes in at 126, almost 127 miles an hour, 30 all. He's got no challenges left, Roddick. rally of the match and and guess what Roddick couldn't challenge that serve because he's out of challenges 30, 40. and he ends up losing this long rally kind of framed there by Chilich a miss hit winner and guess what Roddick serve that it was, was an his ace. first serve huh it was mm. an ace no challenge there ouch. we go ouch break point Chilich Yes. Boy, that first serve percentage is so critical. Big hitting Andy Roddick. In fact, when he serves first serve 70% or better, his record is amazing compared to when he's under that 70% level. And thus far today, he's exactly at 70% for serves. Actually, he's under it. He's at 61. Oh, first serves one is 70%. I'm sorry, 61% in. Boy, the hustle of Chilich. Did he cover some ground? May Roddick hit another. And the smash gives him a 5-4 lead on serve.
22 million in this great country celebrating their national holiday, Australia Day. And there's a look at Melbourne Park and its featured show arena, Rod Labor. 15,000 fans. Marin Chilich and Andy Roddick in this quarterfinal, and Chilich serves at 4 5. Nicely little sneaky surprise serve volley there off the second serve from Chilich. The sun is still beating down out here and although the court temperature is not overly bad, still quite warm conditions and the sweat is pouring off both players makes this first set even that more important. Temperature in the mid 80s, humidity's higher today. Gilbert didn't have that on his list, but Roddick's ahead, one love. And a nice little slider outside for ace number five. Really unusual service motion as well from Chilich because that ball is way over his left hand shoulder. And normally you'd see a kick serve on that toss, but he easily slices it out wide. He's so supple, isn't he, Darren? Absolutely. Really uses his back. Again, Andy Roddick, he muscles the ball around, doesn't he? I mean, he's just very sort of rigid, stocky, goes after it. With Chilich, it's much smoother, much more tensile strength. Big point here for Chilich. His opponent is two points from the set. 30 all at 4-5. is wide and it's a set point for Roddick. So he paid the price there for that nothing ball down the middle of the court and he got no racket head speed and bad direction on that put away forehand. Taking a little extra time Chilich thinking through the importance of this serve. in the errors mm -hmm. Chilich. again just as the numbers uh, suggested as we were coming into this match Roddick with only six errors Chilich with 18 and those last two forehands Mary much cleaner and had a little body weight going through the ball and there's more weight on that shot
Mm. And body serve has been an effective weapon for Chilich. Important hold by Chilich. Digs out of a set point against, and it's five all. Talk about Larry Stefanki and all of the fine players that he has helped through the years. And look at that roster. A couple of McEnroe brothers, and you know how difficult they can be. <laughs> Yevgeny Kofelnikov, Henman. Rios was a... Uh, a very, very uncoachable fellow, but he got him to number one anyway. Gonzo, he made much less of a Gonzo. Fernando Gonzalez. Who do you think would have been the biggest handful on that list? <laughs> Rios, for sure. But <laughs> what amazing talent, though, that kid had. Stefanki played college tennis at Cal Berkeley. First time that he's oh, yeah. the last game as well, a couple of foreheads, but he's now starting to unload with a little more racket head speed. You can just hear the effort that he's putting into some of these ground strokes. Picking up the intensity is Chilich. Five all fifteen all. Our live coverage of the 2010 Australian Open Championships brought to you by Franklin Templeton Investments. This is the quarterfinals from Melbourne on a beautiful summer holiday, late January, midsummer for Australia, and Andy Roddick, Marin Cilic dueling here late in the opening set, 5 all 15 30. Winner, a precious spot in the semifinals. Not good enough at the net, and here's two break points for Chilich. And the problems at the net for Roddy continue. Three for ten. Not much of a challenge thrown at Chilich on that point, and Roddick unhappy with himself. Chilich showing his range to get to that ball, forcing Roddick to volley the winner. Another break point. It's wide, and Chilich has the lead. 6-5, opening set. Major shift in the momentum of this opening set. Roddick had a set point on Chilich's serve, couldn't convert. 
And then Chillich comes back on the second break opportunity. Forehand wide from Roddick. And now the 21 year old Croat serves for the opening set at 6 5. Putting a little side spin on that slice backhand, love 30. He's trying not to give Chilich anything to hit, but after this long rally, it's Roddick who found the net. That's got to be disappointing for him. Nevertheless, still opportunity here at 1530. At love 30, two points from the tie break. Now it's Chillich, two points from the opening set. One of those break points was a set point at 4 5 that Chillich saved. Second double fault gives Roddick a chance to break back for the tiebreaker. It's wide. Roddick breaks back. Tiebreaker we go.
It's been so closely contested this opening set, deservedly. Each man has a new life for a while as they go to the tiebreak to decide this opening set. Roddick leads off. Thank you. with a mini break and a one love lead. One zero Chilich. Sweat is pouring off these two players. Those of you watching Sports Center, welcome to Melbourne, Australia, the 2010 Australian Open Championship. We're in the quarterfinal round. Marin Cilic, 21-year-old Croat, serving to Andy Roddick of the United States. They're in a tie break. Cilic won the first point to decide this opening set. And now 2-0 two, two, Cilic. Winner of this will meet the winner of an incredibly exciting match for tonight as Andy Murray and Rafael Nadal will be on this court. The winner of that match and this one will vie in the semifinals for this coveted major title. It's a matchup of two men who have started this new tennis season brilliantly. Both are 9-0. Both come off their last match, a tense five-set struggle. It skids off the baseline, and Roddick has the mini break back. Two, one, two. Earlier today, Justine Enna on her comeback. Incredible story continues in Melbourne. She's in the semifinals and will meet Zheng Ji, the first Chinese woman to reach the semifinals of the Australian Open. Serena and Venus Williams are playing doubles today. They won the opening set and they're on serve 5-4 in the second set. on the run. It's 2 all in the tie break. 2 all. 15,000 here at Rod Laver Arena. Australia Day, the midsummer national holiday. There are two hopefuls. Uh, Aussies, Samantha Stozer, Leighton Hewitt defeated last night, so disappointment around this great country. They'd hope to be cheering their own on this Tuesday holiday. holiday. It's uh, after four o'clock on Tuesday afternoon. Three, two. Radic loses Chilich. the advantage. Three, two, Chilich. A reminder, you'll be able to watch ESPN2, the Andy Murray, Rafael Nadal, the defending champion that match tonight. Three o'clock in the morning in the east, midnight in the west. So in the midst of this tie break to decide the opening set, we return you back to Sports Center and Scott. Legends for seven.
So they change hands. Neither man able to hold his service points very effectively. Three all. Both players have really picked up their play from the back of the court as well. Some heavier hitting now and trying to open up the court. Still a little bit surprised Chilich hasn't made his way to net more often because his success rate has been very good up there. Seven for nine. Chilich at the net where Roddick has had his troubles. Five for 12. See that both men, their shirts soaked with perspiration, heat, humidity, and the intensity of this opening set. does come forward he's got to step up on that one dick that was hanging there that's his favorite shot the back end he doesn't get great angle on that back end approach but that's his bread and butter short ball with the back end drive it to the back end corner and come on in now Roddick's two service points four three chillage has a weakness on that side this is the perfect time to go there and the pressure points at four on the tiebreaker Roddick would be well advised to continue to go to the Chilich forehand to the forehand of Chilich, and he now has the lead, and with his Five two service points, could win this opening set, 5-4. Meanwhile, out in the doubles action at Margaret Court, Venus and Serena Williams are a set all with Matic Sands and Jan, 6-4 to their opponents in the second set. Set point for Chilich. Roddick had a set point. Chilich served 4 5. Andy Roddick calling him out. You can only speculate that it would be that left knee. Paul Ness consulting with Roddick. The first set to Marin Cilic in a tie break. 
Braddock again did not come out on his day off yesterday to hit on site, did not warm up on site, hasn't talked much about the knee, and so far, Trainer hasn't looked in that direction, Brad. Yeah, and also, too, the knee is not taped up. I don't know. It looks like uh, Paul Ness, the trainer there, he's an Australian trainer, is asking Andy Roddick about something else. One hour, 13 minute opening set. Taxing conditions. Both these guys, again, have played a fair amount of tennis. Roddick coming off a five set win over Gonzalez in the previous round two days ago. Yeah, and I'm very surprised, Chris, how conservative that Andy Roddick is playing, especially if he is having some issues with the knee. You would figure he would want to shorten the points, but he's getting in long rallies and he's playing ultra conservative. That's good enough to win matches in the first week, but not in the second week. The trainer is manipulating Roddick's right arm. This is nothing that Andy's talked about, but not surprising. He usually doesn't like to talk about or dwell on his injuries. Yeah, maybe it's the shoulder. This is still the diagnosis phase. They have yet to take the official timeout. You see Larry Stefanke there. Roddick was kind of gesturing to his shoulder. That's Doug Sprain, the man who travels with Roddick, a former ATP trainer himself, but now Andy's personal physio. Yeah, I mean, this is a little bit troubling because you know, he's not calling a trainer for the knee. Now he's got the shoulder problems, you know, so obviously this is a major concern for Andy Roddick if he's got arm issue, knee issue, and an opponent that, that's playing some good tennis. He's going to take the medical timeout now. So they'll officially take the timeout. He's that going was to just take the diagnosis now. phase. You know, Brad, you know, in that tie break, which, by the way, we, we think just a pretty nervous tense set from both guys in that tie break it was four points all Chilich has a forehand winner and then he lays a 74 mile per hour second serve in play that Roddick misses a backhand return and the set closes out with the Chilich winner a little bit bolder play by the Croat yeah I, there's no question that Chilich littered up the stat sheet 19 winners 24 unforced errors Roddick was 11 and 13 but I felt like Roddick had a lot of chances to hit the ball and he just playing very conservatively like I said that was good enough to win matches in the first week but when you get to the second week and you know the quality of players that you're gonna play against is a lot better you know you got to step up and, and and if Andy is hurting he's got to make the points a little shorter and take some bigger rips of the ball and another stat you'll never see from Andy Roddick he was only at 60 percent first serve percentage and only three aces very unusual serving statistics for Andy Roddick but albeit you know he still you know lost seven points to four so I, I felt like if he was a little bit bolder he could have won that set check some of the highlights here Roddick coming forward look at the movement for the 6-6 six, six man he moves so gracefully I mean, that was a set point right here for Roddick, and I felt like on that second serve, that was a chipped forehand return where Andy could have maybe taken a rip at it. Maybe he could have. He should have. And Roddick has only 5 of 12 points at net. Chilich, a lot more errors, 24 of them, but also a big number of winners. He has a total of 10 forehand winners. The shocking stat, you're right, is the 60% for Roddick first serve. He's not going to win many matches against anybody, much less a guy of Chilich's caliber, who, by the way, isn't even serving 50% himself. But Andy's relatively, or routinely, I should say, up in the you know mid-70s. Now, if you see those stats on Chilich, and you got a set on your hand, I mean, you're feeling like you got a lot of pep in your step because Chilich didn't exactly play a great set. I expect now that if Roddick's got some issues, expect for Chilich to take his game up another level. If you've got a shoulder problem, like apparently Andy does, wouldn't that explain some of the things you're seeing on the court, the serving percentage, the lack of attacking with the forehand? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I did not know anything about the shoulder problem until right this moment. And, and right now, if you're Andy Roddick, when you come back, you, you know, you got to shorten the points a little bit. you got to do some things differently. Only once in his career has Roddick retired from a match in a major, had an ankle problem, Alberto Martin. Uh, move through in Paris. Of course, it was this round a year ago that Djokovic retired against Roddick. Darren, what have you got? Yeah, just went down and spoke to Larry Stefanke. No injury coming into this match, so this is a bit of a surprise to Larry. And he did look to be laboring around the court quite a lot in that first set, uh, first set, putting a lot of effort into the baseline rallies. And Marin, on the other hand, was doing it pretty easily. So for me, when he called the trainer, I actually thought might have been feeling a little bit sick. Obviously, there is a shoulder problem, but no injury coming into this match. 
Hey. Much like the Bagdadis Hewitt match, and Marcos Bagdadis had not had any shoulder or arm problems. He said going into the match, he got in there against Hewitt and clearly was troubled by it right away, couldn't play, and had to retire. Uh, and Chris, I feel like when they're rubbing deep in your shoulder like that, or any area that's a little bit sore, it seems like it could just get sore from, you know, getting worked on. So, you know, because those guys are not exactly, they're, they're putting the thumb in there, they're digging in. In the meantime, for Chilich, a little bit of an unusual position of this tournament, the first time since the opening round that Chilich has actually won the first set. Three times in a row, he's had to come back after losing the first. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, if you're in the Chilich camp, you're elated because he did not play well in that first set. He looked a little bit nervous, didn't serve well, but he's got one set in hand, so I expect him to relax a lot more and get after it in this second set. Roddick, a gamer, will never give up. Back out there, and let's keep a close eye on the right arm as we go back inside to Dick Marion. There. All right, thank you, Chris. And a day where a lot of these folks will go home and throw a shrimp on the barbie. Andy Roddick hoping that that right shoulder is now loose. The fact that he could score only three aces in that set plus a tie break is indicative that perhaps his power not up to the normal level. Chilich opens the second set. Fifteen months. Those two strokes can't make Stefanki and the Roddick camp feel any better. Not a lot of life in them. Let me for seven. Chilich playing with confidence in the first three points to open the second set. Much freer in his shot making. Comfort of that opening set win. Hustle. 40, 15. 15. He had to reverse field uh, on a dime as he was going backwards and then had to sprint forward to finish the point. Backs up his win in the opening First set minutes. with an easy hold. Mary, what do you have for us? Well, you know, Roddick is, he's, look how far back he stays, you know, for these rally points. I mean, he's, Chilich does a much better job of hugging the baseline, and it allows him to get in with more ease. When Roddick has been trying to come to the net, we see him getting passed cleanly time and again. Often it's because he's trying to get in from so far back. Chilich, meanwhile, almost half the time uh, on or inside the baseline. You know, this is very important service game for Roddick. Let's see what he has after the medical timeout to work on that shoulder.
Franklin Templeton Investments bringing you the live coverage of the Australian Open 2010 from Melbourne. Quarterfinal action. Well, that's some muddled thinking from Roddick there. Marin Childers continues to move so beautifully side to side and in. Look at this. Runs like a much smaller man, and Roddick uh, clearly wasn't prepared for the next shot. He's got to, he, he should know that Chilich is, uh, he's not hitting as aggressively as perhaps he could be, but he's moving beautifully, very aggressively. 50. Finally, an ace. Roddick could have used a couple of those in the tie break. That's his biggest of the day at 135 and a half. Yeah, well, that's a good sign for the Roddick camp. Scrambling after that little soft lob. Look at Chilich. This he commanded the entire court, didn't he? His position. Hundred thirty mile an hour skitter. Thirty. A little salve for the wounds. It looked dire for Roddick after that one first one. set, but he holds. It's one all in the second. Here's uh, some conversation Roddick had uh, with his box. Give me a looser. Asking for more rackets. A strung looser, Darren. I guess he's looking for a little help, a little trampolining from. Uh, from his racket with that sh short, sore shoulder. And there they are, getting them done. These guys can get them done in under 20 minutes. 15 minutes. That area just uh, adjacent to uh, Rod Labor, fans actually can watch uh, those gentlemen perform their art. Ace for Chilich is sixth. He's already got a fairly lively racket, hasn't he, Darren? 15. Darren had gone up to talk with coach uh, Larry Stefanke, Andy Ruddick's coach, and is not back to a microphone uh, location. A couple of times in the match. Roddick in a jam has had to fly swat the return.
25th unforced error from Chilich. Ten more than committed by Roddick. But he also has nine more winners than Roddick in the match. wide was Chillage and Roddick has break point. 30, 40. 40. Second set. Good on you, say the Aussies supporting the Yank. And meanwhile, the frantic effort of. <laughs> Halfway done. <laughs> You're on the clock. Hurry up. Welcome back to the 2010 Australian Open, presented by Franklin Templeton Investments. A country founded by convicts, 73,000 to Tasmania has become a loving, lawful nation. And down in the southeast corner, Melbourne, the second largest city, almost 4 million, and this incredible tennis complex with two retractable roofs, and they're going to build a roof that uh, also will slide open on Margaret Court Arena, where Serena and Venus Williams are playing. They're in the third set, and up a break now, 3-1, the defending champions, the Williams sisters lead. Getting attention again was Roddick in that towel off. Trainer came back out and worked on that right shoulder, and he was grimacing as that tr uh, trainer got deep into the musculature. And uh, Brett and uh, Darren Cahill is back with us. Hey, Mary. Yeah, I think Andy, which is quite unusual that he's asking for a looser racket and a hot day. Normally, it's the other way around. When the weather's warm, the ball normally flies pretty much, and you need to string the rackets a little bit tighter. But if that shoulder's sore, he might be looking for easy power. That's what I'm. And you get yeah. easy power from a looser restring. And and what about that that frame he uses there? And that thing's lively too. Oh yeah, that thing can go. <laughs> and I love the convict line there as well, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Just talking about your ancestry, Darren. Thank you very much. <laughs> they must have been terrific people that the British didn't want. I mean, to send uh, them to start this country because they surely are as likable a nation as you could ever find in the world. And by the way, uh, if you get Darren from Adelaide and we're in Melbourne, they were uh, sent to Tasmania and eventually to Sydney that uh, actually Melbourne started its populace with the gold rush, much like our gold rush in the States in 1849. They had one in 1850-51, and that brought tremendous numbers of people to this particular spot in the country. Appropriate that these great tennis players are searching for the same, their rush for gold and starting this 2010 season with a major title. Yeah, pity my family didn't see any of that gold. Oh! His shoulder is really hurting him. He's taking a long while after every serve just to shake it off. long 30 all Roddick with the lead here 2-1 in the second but Chile's won the opening set 7-6 seven, 7 points to 4 Larry Stefanke the coach of Roddick and those who 
works here for the 27-year-old American concern. Right shoulder has been worked on feverishly by the trainer. Paul Ness has been on on two occasions. I saw it long. Voice of Carlos Ramos in the chair. Just caught the line. Mm, what a shot by Chilich. And he has a chance to break back. That's the one difference between, well, there was a few differences, obviously, but Roger Federer would take that short ball on the rise, and Andy always lets that ball hit the top of the arc, then come back down and hit in his hitting zone, and it gives his op opposition a chance to get back into the court. Doesn't take the time away from his opponents. Double fault, and for Roddick, that's such a rare occasion, his first of this match. Very rarely will you see him donate a point on a double fault, and with it, the game, and it's Chilich back to two all. Venus and Serena, just two games from the semis now in the women's doubles. That is only his fifth double fault, Roddick's, for the entire tournament. Five matches, only five doubles. One has to feel that an indicator that shoulder just is not right. over the official. <laughs> They're both checking on each other. Roddick in an earlier match Roddick actually in scrambling on that back line collided with an official and <laughs> fell heavily. And that's pretty athletic move there. This is the Melbourne was the site of the 56 uh, Olympic Games. That's a hurdle move there Chilich throwing in. Well remember a couple of rounds ago Andy Roddick he, he called he ran into a Lions person and Later called it an immovable object. <laughs> Some nice moving there from uh, from that limes person into her tuck. Fortunately, no one bruised in that exchange. She was ready, wasn't she? Yeah, it's Roddick ready. He's got a love 30 opening. Let me. Second serve. Chilich under 50% for the match on serve. Andy has has got to make use of these chances. Well, they're striking the ball early, Chilich. 15 seconds. Chap beautifully, he just times his sweeps through this backhand, meets it, redirects it, no play. All from inside the baseline. His, his serving coming into this match was only at 
There's a really big game here for Chilich. In his previous service game, he looked a little tired to me and maybe a small letdown after winning that tight first set. But if he can hold serve here, this would be a tough one for Andy to bounce back. Chilich has already played two five-setters. And he won a tournament coming into the Australian Open. Four feet, I think. Can't read a lot into ace count, but perhaps today is an exception. Seven aces, Chilich, four for Roddick. You wouldn't expect that. Roddick's count being so low. And from Love 30, Chilich holds. 3-2 on serve, second set. The 21-year-old Croat in the lead. Won the first set tiebreak. And our man in the restringing shed <laughs> hands off the baton and uh, hustling on to Rod Laver Arena, that young lady. It's not exactly the Olympic torch, but there's something <laughs> festive there is, about that. It is. It, that's, uh, you, know, you have the feeling they posted the Olympics back in 56 over at the Melbourne Cricket Grounds. And uh, the way they're building this facility and arenas around it, you have to think that down the line might be 16, 20 years ahead. Oh, they, it was great it in Sydney. The Sydney Olympics were tremendous. Roddick attended uh, again that right shoulder. Serves 2-3. Trying to go around the net post. Meanwhile, the Williams sisters have built a 5-1 lead in that third set, decisive set, as they try to move to the semis, defend their title. And they'll be on court singles quarterfinal action tomorrow. I'm just not liking the look of this at all. You know, normally when Andy's down a set and it's on serve in the second, he's getting angry or he's trying to make something happen, but he's got that look about him that this guy's a really tough opponent. How am I supposed to beat this guy in the best of times, but with half a shoulder? It's a look of resignation at the moment. As he was getting rubbed out, Darren, on that last changeover, the guy kneading deeply into his shoulder, and you could hear Andy say, it's not going to get any better, is it? We're in terror of the competition. We've had several players pull out in the middle of the match. Through the years, that's commonplace. Long two week tournament. And watch out here. Two break points for Chilich. And also the fact that Roddick tried to serve and volley the last two points would not be lost on Marin Chilich. Trying to shorten the points. Huh? Exactly. So all the signs are there. Roddick working under the, the pressure and the pain of a shoulder injury here in the second set. Hits the line and Chilich has a 4-2 lead in the second. He's a very proud guy, Roddick. It's one of the many qualities that make him attractive, and he's a 
tough competitor he loves to win and he's would have to be an incredible pain for him to pull out of this match but should Shillich go on and roll through this uh, second set one wonders Frustration uh, intersecting uh, with resignation, it appears. And Chilich scoring at ease. Oh, he's doing a good job to put all this behind him as well, and Chilich is just worrying about his side of the court. And you've got to make sure you just put your head down and feel like you're playing an opponent who's 100%. Keep playing your game if you're Chilich. What a pity, though, for Andy Roddick. He lost the last part of 2009 to a knee injury. Had to work hard to rehab that after surgery. And he has to work very, very hard to get himself into shape for this sport. And he's willing to do it. 13, 15. Meanwhile, out at Margaret Court, the Williams sisters, the defending champions of this Australian Open, are serving for the semifinals at 5-2, and Pam Schreiber's out there. And Serena has had all sorts of trouble holding serve from after the first set. She dropped serve twice in the second. The Williams sisters uh, did not allow Maddox Sands or Jan to hold serve in this third set until the last game. It was 5-1, but now love 30. Sands and Maddox looking to make it closer out here in the quarterfinals. And here at Rod Laver Arena, forehand miss from Chilich, 30 all. Chilich in the lead, 4 2. It's kind of amazing because Serena in singles has not yet dropped serve. 29 for 29 in service games. Maddox Sands with that uh, special costume attire, the long knee socks. You know, we have long knee socks on one side, the illusion of bareness on the other. It's quite a match. And the challenge ball in. First serve for Chilich, 30 all. Three break points against Serena Serve. Automatic Sands and Yon. Break to 5 3. So they're making it interesting out there. Williams, Williams, the top get to three. And an error from the forehand of Chilich gives Roddick a break point. This is the most competitive match that uh, Serena and Venus Williams have been forced to play in this championship. Is it their opponents, Pam, or are they just a little lull today? No, Maddox Sands and Jan have played a very aggressive match, but Maddox Sands having all the trouble, hasn't held serve since midway through the second. Now 15 all. Second break point for Roddy. 
Chilich had lost his serve at one all in the second set. Roddick with the lead, but immediately lost his serve and was broken again back to back. So Chilich serving here at 4 2 faces a second break point. Fires, break point gone. Oh, that's real Australia Day holiday fair out there at Margaret Court. <coughs> and the Williams sisters now two points from the semifinals. Meanwhile, here at Rod Labor, game point for Chilich for a 5 2 lead. And it's 5 4 here, Dick. Well, the Williams sisters in a tough fight will serve for the semifinals. Venus Williams will be on the line out at Margaret Court. Meanwhile, Chilich builds his lead to 5 2 in the second here at Labor. Second set uh, drawing to a close here at Rod Laver Arena and the 21 year old the youngest player left in the final eight of the men's championship Marin Cilic with a 5 2 lead over wounded Andy Roddick. Roddick has lost his serve back to back and uh, in fact he's lost his serve three of the last four. And he's been broken four times lost his serve four times the entire championship and an indication that that right shoulder just isn't uh, strong enough at this point to play his usual game. Well, he is serving balling. 15 minutes. But I had a couple of chances to break Chilix that last game. But really didn't offer a serious threat. Again, nothing on that uh, first volley of Roddick's. It gives Chilich, the speedy Chilich, so much time to do what he wants with his passes. Doesn't look rushed at all, does he? No, just hooks it softly into the corner. That was a 110 mile an hour serve, but swung wide. That 70% mark is key to Roddick. He's well under it, 62%. Roddick's Even though Andy's lost a lot of miles per hour on that first serve, I think Marin Cilic has done a wonderful job getting the first serve back into play. Long arms, and he's made Roddick play a lot of shots today off those first serves.
Meanwhile, at Margaret Court, it's match point for the Williams sisters. Let's go out there. Venus Williams serving at 40-15. Yeah, from a 5-1 lead, this set has gotten a lot tighter. The Williams sister determined to end it here. A lot of people standing out here on Margaret Court Arena. This was an outstanding, entertaining match. We're going to talk to them, though, in just a few minutes back inside. Well, they had not been tested at all, Venus and Serena Williams in their doubles play, but that was a pretty good fight out there this afternoon, and they're through to the final four as they endeavor to defend their title and eyes on perhaps a doubles grand slam in this 2010 year. Meanwhile, Roddick able to hold his serve. It's 5-3, Chilich on the line serving for a two set lead. might have left. This is a now or never game for him, one would think. Injured or not, trying to find a way here to deny the two-set lead. Chelich has three set points and a two set advantage. Chelich has never been to the semifinals of a major championship. Made it to the quarters at the U.S. Open last fall. Quarters here. So the young guy is ever closer to a big opportunity. And with an ace, he secures the second set. Six games to three. Just following Roddick to his chair, and we'll see whether... He offers any indication of um, whether he's going to be able to continue to play in this match. It's okay. So we'll be back live. Our coverage shortly after 5 o'clock live in Melbourne, Australia. Well, in the previous round, Andy Roddick had to come from two sets to one down. Just the second time in his career to beat Gonzalez now. He's in an even deeper hole, down two sets to Chilich. And concerns, obviously, about the shoulder. Roddick's going to play on there. He can no longer be treated by the trainer for the same injury. But uh, what can he possibly do, Brett, to manage the pain and, and get past a, a tough customer? Well, obviously, he came in with the knee. Now it's the shoulder. One thing's for sure, if I could get a 20-second coaching timeout, 
is shorten the points. You know, maybe he can't serve as big, but he can take some more chances on the forehand. But you're not going to beat Chilich on defense. I mean, Chilich is the one that's standing in the center of the court, moving Roddick side to side. Now, like I said, the first week, that was okay. Now we're in the second week, and if he's hurting, take some chances, man. Rip that forehand. Pull it out of the holster. If he can. Who knows what the pain, who knows what he's dealing with. Let's talk about that court position for Roddick, and inside the point uh, shows that Chilich is keeping Roddick back in the red zone. Andy, maybe Look a couple at this opportunities movement here. by the 6'6", Chilich. I, I can't believe how good that he can move. He kind of reminds me of like a Manu Ginobili, like a 6'6 NBA guy. But there was a couple chances on this point where Roddick just doesn't hit it, and then when Chilich has the chance, he strikes. That's the big difference in the match. When Roddick has the chance to strike, he hasn't striked. And when Chilich has a chance, he takes it. And he's serving at just 61%. That's not a winning percentage. And Chilich getting away with serving well under 50% for this match. Back inside to Dick, Mary, and Pam. All right, gentlemen, it's 15 all here as we open the third set. You saw Roddick just dump a volley into the net. So his troubles coming forward continue. Not able to steal any points that way. He's 12 for 25. There, and uh, we don't know the limitations of the shoulder injury. Uh, Brad thinks. He had to go for more big shots. <laughs> What's your thought? Well, there's no question he wants to shorten the points. Points, that's for sure. And in fact, on the return games, he's standing in and he is actually hitting that first return. There's, I think Andy's shoulder, the thing could be falling off and he wouldn't show it too much. And the fact that we can see that it is hurting means that's it's a pretty bad injury for him. The guy's as tough as a beast. Certainly does suck the drama out of this uh, quarterfinal match. He's actually doing a fair job on the backhand side of flattening out and keeping better court position, but he's not going to beat anyone from the baseline. It's not his game, and it's also not his game to move forward. So it's a tough assignment for him, really, in these positions. He relies on serving himself out of trouble. This is his 11th service game plus the tie break, and he has only five aces. So, usually figure Roddick on this surface to come up with 15, 20 aces to get some easy points. Not today. Yeah. He does hold open the third. That's That's previous game when he was returning he actually took a really strong position close to the baseline he was attacking all of Chilich's second serves and I think that's still the right play but when you hit it think more about direction if you're going to stand close to the baseline think about direction when you've got a little breeze at your back because the breeze in the court will help you I want to remind you tonight match in the quarterfinals worthy of a final in a major there they are number five Andy Murray the talented Scott against the defending champion two seed Rafael Nadal 3 30 in the morning Tuesday morning back in the eastern time zone tennis fans in the west at 12 30 special fair live from Melbourne All right, here's a chance. And that goes exactly to my point. He hit that return great, but it's straight down the middle of the court, and this guy doesn't have any trouble absorbing pace. Direction is the key for Roddick at the moment. Roddick, perhaps seeing it with his heart, thought it might have hit the line. Well, it did. He's got to do that for three more sets. He's in the semis. It's tough. It's very, very tough. Out. 
He likes Pace Chilich, and obviously it's high risk 51. for Andy to try to go for, go big every time around. Andy, I thought, came out to this court with a very good tactic to try to off-speed Chilich. Roddick's biggest problem in that first set is that his serve didn't do enough of the work for him. So now Roddick, who has worked so hard to make his game very solid, is going to have to play high risk. Times Roddick's been able to come into the net with a to good effect. You see, again, the way he constructed that point, that was his plan, and I thought it was a very, very good one. Your point's well taken, Mary. Down two sets, how many of those does he have in the bank? Well, especially because it's not how he wants to, he's fighting his own instinct, too, Dick. This is, Roddick wants to hit big. But he knows it's just what he, he knows that it's just what Marin Chilich wants to hit. He's got some pro he's got some issues out here. Yeah. You do have to feel for him. Mm. Well, here's an opening. Two break points. <laughs> That's the other thing that Andy has to remember is this guy has never made it to a major semi-final before and the nerves have to kick in at some stage. So if he can be a pest of himself and just hang around, you never know. See, he wants to hit it. Mm -hmm. That was an aggressive return. Chilich able to deliver it right back. Get the air. Another break point. Village continues to struggle with that first serve, 45 percent. And Ronick does get the break, as he did in the second set. But immediately was broken back by Chilich. And then broken again on the way to a 6-3 second set for the Croat. It's kind of crazy, actually, because his break game today has been fairly good. Giving himself a few opportunities to break, and he's also broken serve at least a couple of times. Three for eight. Yeah. He would normally take that. Yeah. But he wouldn't take five aces against Chilich's ten early into a third set. Just had to work so hard for everything. Good play there. Yeah, he's taking on this guy without 15 to 20 miles per hour on that first serve. Energy that Roddick is expending trying to deliver shots. You don't normally get that from him. He's just trying to call from deep in the core. Yeah. 
Well done. I bet that brought a smile to Brad Gilbert's face. Now, Roddick won so many new fans with his incredible effort against Roger Federer in that 16-14 final set at Wimbledon. has worked too often for Chilich. Roddy comes in. Chilich uses that cross-court forehand for the winner. Can you hear the groan that yeah. Andy is? It's not even a real grunt. It's more a groan of pain on every shot. Yep, you can hear it. You know, his uh, courage and continuing is to be admired. And there... A rare ace, only his sixth. And he actually geared that up to almost 137 miles an hour. That's his fastest of the match. Where'd that come from? And there was a major grimace after that serve. Let's just calling up all he has, every fiber, and the man trying to do the best he can with an injured shoulder. And he does hold and has a three love lead, third set. Now, this is a good on you performance by the Americans. Three guys to love. Seven six six three. Chilich took the opening sets. Now it's Roddick with the lead. Love three. Chilich serving. Roddick in uh, one of his interviews uh, in our studio offered a lot of information earlier in the championship. He's quickly asked Serena Williams to be his doubles partner, mixed doubles, an Olympic event in London. Fifteen months. It didn't take him long to ring her up when he found out that that was going to be for the gold. And he also said that uh, he wouldn't mind being Davis Cup captain someday. And Patrick McEnroe, our current captain, said he'd be a good one. And he can now play a little score management now that he's up a break here in the third. And if he gets down in these Chilich service games early, you know, keep the points really short. Don't waste any energy. It's been a drop in Chilich's game here in the third set. Just wide, Chilich holds 3 1. Rodriguez, 3 against 1.
Chilich part of the diversity, as is Roddick coming into the final eight of this championship. Eight men from eight different nations competing for the title. Sadly for the hosts, no Australian. Larry Stefanke is going to be able to call, lift it and pull the DVD after this match and go, all right, Andy, don't tell me you can't be aggressive on the return of serve. There's something really positive to come out of this has been the way he's returned the second serve. He's stood on the plate and he's been aggressive and he's been returning well. That's a great point there. A correction from chair umpire Carlos Ramos. And Chilich. Is he going to challenge? Chilich, challenge yes, he will. So this one is on the umpire Ramos. On the overrule. And it was good. The play right under his chair. And Mary, you know Andy is managing himself when he doesn't take issue with that with the umpire. <laughs> Well, actually, he f he originally challenged, and then the umpire agreed with him, saved him the challenge. Then Chilich made the challenge and lost it. But you're go. right. He's, there we go. He's uh, and he's still very much in this match. He's just quietly working his way back in. He's lifted his first serve percentage a bit. He's not one of those guys who's going to retire easily, is he? No, that would be a shock. And it's somewhat shocking that he's making a little comeback here in the third. He leads 4-1. Outside courts here at Melbourne Park and... There you'll find the men that'll battle tonight on Rod Laver, Andy Murray, and Rafael Nadal, the defending champion. 3.30 Eastern time, Tuesday morning. 12.30 Pacific time to see Murray and Nadal. That's uh, a match worthy of staying up to enjoy. And here at Rod Laver, 21-year-old Marin Cilic, two-set lead. Serving at 1-4 in the third. Quarterfinal action here at Rod Laver Arena. The 2010 Australian Open Championship in American Andy Roddick playing with a wounded right shoulder. He's received attention for the last set and a half against Marin Cilic, the lanky six foot six inch Croat. The 14th seed Cilic won the opening set in a tie break, seven points to four, and then took the second set, 6 3. But Roddick trying to alter his game to compete with a shoulder limiting his power game has a 4-1 lead here in the third but Chilich serving at 40-15. Already today Justine Enna and Zheng Zhi of China have advanced to the women's semifinals as Chilich closes in on that game he leads Roddick leads 4-2 in the third and Serena and Venus Williams, the defending champions uh, of this Australian Open in doubles, have uh, survived a tough three-set match. They're in the semifinals. So that's a story from Melbourne. Let's go back to Stan. And Andy Roddy. 
Opens his 4-2 game with an ace now with a couple in this set and seven in the three sets. The other factor to consider here as well is that Andy Roddick was treated for this shoulder about 45 minutes ago and more than likely he was given some painkillers to take. Those things normally take a little while to kick in. Might coincide with the fact that he's serving a little faster. There's three great first serves in this game. That one at 125 and a half. Very popular player is Andy Roddick down here in Australia. You can hear the oohs and ahs when he misses a shot. They're pulling for him to rally. Oh, you could hear him groan as he delivered that serve. That one hurt. 14 seconds. Couldn't even raise up to defend the return from Chilich. Chilich would really do well to look for a break. Like, uh, Andy's, Andy's going to keep fighting. And Chilich has allowed him into this, this set, hasn't he? Another point for 5-2. A little too passive, Chilich. just staring off into space he had to wonder what is going through his thought process well if he can sneak out this set the pressure will be on Chilich to do something this is how he was throughout that entire changeover the high marks for the way he's battled here in the third helped by some Chilich errors nevertheless Roddick leading 5-2 in the third. Well, Marin Chilich has got to be a little bit confused about the state of Andy Roddick. And he's got to be feeling the pressure as well. It's only one break. I mean, he really would do well to close this out in straights if he could. And as his coach Bob Brett says of Marin, he says it's so important that kids like him have time to develop because as soon as there's pressure, pressure to do everything yesterday it's easy to lose them I think this kid has a very heady sense of how to deal with this stuff oh, yeah. Yeah. like the way he plays he's together he's efficient smooth in his shot making but Bob Brett says it's a struggle to keep that balance in their development well, he's got a good one the moves upward shown by Marin Chilich in the last five years it's not it's more than just incremental I mean he has take taken major bounces every year of his young professional life and with his performance here in Australia he well could be in the top 10 by the end of the week he's already moved up uh, based on this quarterfinal appearance to number 12 now, Roddick, all but conceding that game. A love hold for Chilich. Roddick saving his energy here at 5-3, trying to serve out this third set. Two and a half hours, the length of the match. Live from Rod Labor Arena, Melbourne Park. 
the winner moves to the semifinals of this first major of the season. Roddick's point. Yeah, he lost it at the net, though. He didn't lose it at the baseline just now. Doesn't feel good enough to be frustrated. What you read into that reaction. Normally he'd be upset with himself. Hey. Chilich has got to, this is as good as his footwork is, he's really got to make sure he keeps moving because he's got to know that Roddick is going to be going pretty big going as close to the lines as he can, like that. Tough in that deuce court with the shadows growing almost to the halfway mark on the surface there that Roddick's serving out of the sun and into the shade. Let me well, that cost Roddick an ace. There's a lot of lets that no other players seem to hear. Go to be honest, I didn't hear a thing. I agree. That's good. You know, Andy's done a wonderful job in this set of being a little unpredictable and giving Chilich absolutely no rhythm at all. Set points for Roddick. Boy, at the start of this set, you could not have predicted that Roddick would rally and perhaps make this a serious match. And he has the set. Six games to three. Stefanski and the sellout and Ron Labor applauding the effort of Andy Roddick. Welcome back to the 2010 Australian Open, presented by Franklin Templeton Investments. And welcome back in this beautiful Australia Day. Andy Roddick forcing a fourth set, still down two sets to one to Marin Cilic. Quick tournament update if you're just joining us. Women's quarterfinals played earlier today. Justine Enna in straight sets over Nadia Petrova, but she had a rally from two breaks down in the second to get past the Russian. She will meet Zheng Zhi of China, the 26 year old, five foot two, five foot three Chinese player who reaches the semis of a major for the second time and then. Rafa and Andy Murray at 3.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Chris Fowler back with Brad Gilbert. And whether or not Roddick's shoulder is 50%, 70%, you like what he's doing upstairs in that third set. A lot better set from Andy Roddick. 69% first serve percentage. And, you know, he shortened the points a couple times, too. Once he got ahead the break, he let a few points go. Much more economical. And I tell you, about, I don't know, 17, 18 years ago when I wrote my book, Winning Ugly, I wrote an entire chapter on be wary of wounded bear. A lot of times when guys are injured, you know, psychologically you start worrying about his injury and you start forgetting about his game. At the end of the second set, I think Chilis was thinking, you know what, is Roddick going home? Is this match over? Roddick is competing and I, maybe he's probably thinking less about his shoulder and figuring out how, to, how I'm gonna win this match. And I think Chilis is all of a sudden, it's in his head, you know what, if I'm Chilich, I tell myself, he's not hurt. I got to just get back to doing what I'm doing. Chilich is 
what we call a young gun, but he's a pretty experienced guy. He's played 185 pro matches. He's played a bunch of matches at Grand Slams. He's also played 12 five set matches, so he doesn't fear going the distance here. Oh, there's no cut. For a 21-year-old guy, he's got a lot of tire on the tread. But Andy Roddick's got a lot of guile and a lot of experience. See how Chilich handles his serve. He's up 30 love. Opening game of the fourth set. Back to Dick and Mary. All right, thank you, Chris. Chilich, 30 love. This first game of the fourth set. Roddick going full out on all of the Chilich service games. Make or break. And then hoping he can hold uh, when the serve switches to his end. Almost a lull chillage with that soft rally and then ooh, rip that backhand winner. Chillage is really allowing Roddick to get into his service games too. He's still he's still under 50% for this match. I just I'm, I'm just surprised he hasn't made that adjustment yet. And another winner. Backhand wing from Roddick, and he has a break point. Some of the fans trying to help out the American. He broke Chilich in the very first service game for the Croat in the third set and was able to hold on to that lead throughout to capture the set 6 3. <laughs> what are you thinking, Darren? Well, that's just the worst possible thing that can happen to Chilich when you've got a two set lead and you drop the third set in a competitive set, just the one break is serve, and then you come out and dump your first service games. Can't even begin to tell you what starts to go through your mind. You start thinking the fifth set, doubt creeps in straight away. Brad was right. He's probably thinking a little too much about what's happening down the other side of the court instead of focusing on his side of the court. But well done to Andy Roddick. He's playing the score beautifully, and this is probably the best I've seen him hit his backhand. He is flattening that thing out and taking chances with it. Two big winners from that backhand in that last game. And as you mentioned earlier, out of desperation and playing without your full resources because of the shoulder injury, perhaps Roddick is learning that he's got more game to call upon as he looks uh, ahead of this 2010 season. More complete. Paints the line, thirty fifteen. Chilich has been way too passive in a lot of these baseline rallies and he's got to get back to what he was doing in the first couple of sets and that's moving Andy from corner to corner and making him run. Roddick is actually dictating all of these baseline rallies. Oh. Mm. Laid off that as well. 
Fourteen. Roddick, a semifinalist in the odd years, 2003, 5, 7, and 9, just as Serena Williams has been the champion here in those odd years. Can you dig out of this two-set hole and make it to the semis this year? Oh, what a turnabout, a two-love lead. Well, a reminder at 3.30 in the morning, Tuesday morning in the East, it's Andy Murray and Rafael Nadal in the other quarterfinal play today and tonight. Tennis Channel, 8 a.m. Tuesday, Australian Open today, ESPN 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon Tuesday. In case you missed anything, tune in for men's quarterfinal action. Then Tennis Channel, 7 o'clock in the evening, Monday, live quarterfinal action. Then 360.com, live coverage of TV courts, full ESPN to telecast all available at ESPN.com. Line to line. Tillich has just let go so much of the energy he really needs to make his way back and, and try to dictate this match again. I tell you what, I haven't seen Andy hit like this since he was a junior. Hit like, like what? <laughs> he's crushing the ball from the back of the court. He's playing against a pretty stiff breeze here at the moment, and this is as big as I've seen him hit the ball from the back of the court. All the inhibitions have gone. He's just playing tennis now. This is great stuff. So I remember Andy playing some pretty snappy tennis in the Wimbledon final last year. And of course, that surface was much easier for him. And that is his best surface, right? The kind with speed in it. Yeah, absolutely. And probably my point is the fact that he's flattening the ball out more on both sides than I've ever seen him do it. And obviously he's trying to keep the points short and he's trying to be unpredictable and give this guy no rhythm. He's doing it beautifully. He's giving this guy a, a nervous breakdown. Second serve at Love 30. Roddick with the door open for a possible double break lead. No problem there. He's playing with house money at the moment. He's got a break in the fourth set. So lump 30 at 15.30. Keep taking your chances. Hmm. See, Roddick was trying to draw those kind of errors from softballing. Marin Cilic, beach ball, the kind of the kind of plays Brad Gilbert used to great effect in his career. Now he doesn't even have to do that. Now he's playing the kind of tennis he feels like playing. The instinctive kind of tennis that Roddick has always wanted to play. He doesn't even have to do what he did against what he tried to do against Cilic, the start of this match. Cilic has just gone away. One break point save, but Roddick here with another to grab a three-love lead. We also have about another 15 minutes of that uncomfortable period where the sun's moving through, so the shade's coming across the court, and maybe that's why he's struggling a little bit with his timing, but probably another 10 minutes of this. Oh, that's a timely ace from Chilich's 13th of the match. <laughs> Two chances for Roddick to grab a double break lead have gone. Another second serve. Oh, that's the biggest forehand of the day. It's a 93 mile an hour serve that just stood up for Roddick. And he can continue to pound and until and unless Chilich starts playing better. 
Third chance to break. And he does. Roddick. A double break advantage here in the four. Three long. Oh, my. Ladies and gentlemen, six minutes. Well, about an hour and 15 minutes ago, if you tuned away with Roddick down two sets and in pain with a shoulder injury heavily being worked upon by the ATP trainers, you probably thought, well, that's uh, too bad for Roddick. He had a good run, but uh, his day and his championship hopes are gone here in Australia. Not to be. He had one break in the third set and held on to it for a 6-3, and he's up two breaks here at 3-love in the fourth. And Marin Cilic has just gone to see. He, he's and he's just totally stepped away. He's even playing from further back on the baseline. He's the one in pain now. Yeah, maybe shoulder that pains Roddy, but right now it's above the the years that are hurting Cilic. Marie Nadal played tonight the other semifinal, battling to get into the semifinals. Murray with a winning record against both of these men. Roddick forcing the issue. Just looking ahead, Roddick is two and five against Nadal, three and six head to head against Andy Murray. Chilich has only played Nadal once and he crushed him in Beijing. And he is one and three versus Murray. Roddy, Roddy now serving into the 70s in this set. That's 10 aces for the man who won the U.S. Open title back in 2003. Oh. And doesn't like the uh, tag one major wonder. Couple of more points for the four love advantage. And he slides an ace for his 11th. And he's just taken command of this set for love. What you've always had to like about Andy Roddick, Dick, is that through the years, you know, he wins that major at a young age, and then he goes begging. And he tried a couple of different coaches. He tried, you know, a couple of different ideas about what he needed to do to win his second major. He's picked the brains of some of the very best, including Brad Gilbert. He tried Jimmy Connors for a while. Now Larry Stefanke. Stefanke has hit the right nerves, hasn't he? Proved that shot backhand and get in the best condition of your life. And just make yourself very hard to beat, even when you don't have your best stuff. Live action, Australian Open, quarterfinals. Mary Carrillo and Darren Cahill to Kenberg. Franklin Templeton Investments bringing you the great action from down under. So Australia Day, version of the 4th of July down under. Now, double fall from Chilich. His fourth of the match, and he is really struggling. After winning that opening set in a breaker, seven points to four. 6-3 in the second. Looked as if he was on cruise control to the semifinals. Roddick is working his way back into the match the same way we used to see Jimmy Connors try to figure out a way to win. Cracks another big forehand. And three more break points. 
not afraid to use a little elbow grease. <laughs> <laughs> this has become something to really... The pity of it is that Chilich's game has dropped so yeah. much. Yeah, you get the feeling that if Roddy can hold on here, and it certainly appears he's on his way to uh, squaring the match at two sets all, that the Crow Otto get the wake-up alarm in the fifth. Seven out of 10 Americans have credit card debt. Like this single mom who couldn't make ends meet and fell behind on her payments. Or this couple who considered bankruptcy because of their debt. Call American Debt Specialist now to find out if you can reduce or even settle your debt for good. If you qualify, you could have one easy monthly payment that fits your budget. It's simple, legal, and proven. It was amazing. I'm glad I made the call. Call 800-976-8897 now. Andy Roddick out of desperation, despair, wounded, down two sets, takes the third and now has broken Chilich three times here in the fourth and serves for a love set. An hour or so ago, if you'd have said one of these players might have a love set, I certainly would have bet on this man, not Roddick. Uh, you, you knew as soon as you heard Andy Roddick ask for a different tension racket that he wasn't going to go away. But he did more than just change his, his strings. He changed his strategy. He, he stayed around and Chilich had been had been in such control and then he, he just he just pretty much assumed it seemed that uh, the match was his. Oh, there's a rare point from Chilich. After he barely returned the serve. Yeah, Chilich would be well served in this game to start really hitting the ball and trying to get a little confidence going into the final set. Sort of determine right now how you're going to play the fifth. And, and, there, and he's going to take that wide serve as well. Andy's getting away with his swinging serve out wide to the juice court time and time again. Exactly. He's got to take that away. Ch Chilich just isn't even moving on his return game. And that was only his third winner. Their third winner. It's amazing. Give a lot of props though to Andy for completely changing the way he's gone about these last couple of sets, and he's absolutely befaffled. Befaffled? Good Aussie word there for you. Is that like bamboozle? Confused, befaffled. <laughs> <laughs> Dazed. Two points from taking it the distance here in this quarterfinal. Chance to take a game off Roddick serve. This is his first break point since back in the uh, second set. Avoid the shutout in the fourth. It's 5 1. Mm -hmm. 
coach Brett can take a deep breath wondering if he's ever going to win a game. This would be the third five setter that Bob Brett has sat through this tournament. Both men entering this quarterfinal off wins in five sets. And that's a huge game, that last game for Chilich. To lose a set six love going into a final set in the quarterfinal of a major. His confidence would have been way down, so a good hold here. Put a little more pressure back on Roddick to close it out. A little more conviction in Chilich's shot making here the last two games. Fourteenth base. Three hours they've played. And apparently they'll put in more before this one's decided. In a final set. And Schillich back to back games, 5-2. Braddock. We'll serve for the final set when we return to Rod Labor Arena. Andy Roddick serving at 5-2 here in the fourth. We extend this to a final set. If we do go to a fifth, no tiebreak to decide the ultimate set. But Chilich has found new life after a five games sabbatical for the 21 year old. He's come back to life here the last two games. Keep in mind that second five setter of Chilich's run so far was against Juan Martin Del Potro, the number four player in the world. Very physical battle. And now he's trying to beat his second top 10 player in the world. Number seven, Andy Roddick. And he'd already had a five-set match before that. <laughs> Meanwhile, Roddick was down two sets to one to Fernando Gonzalez, and that was a heavy battle of wills and big shot making before Roddick survived in five. Roddick will challenge. The ball's called out. Second serve. Roddick hoping he had the ace. Call by the lines person and chair umpire Ramos finally. He was blocked. You can hear him. The lines person was blocked, did not make the call. And Chilich now will challenge whether or not Ramos is uh, eyesight from long range. That's as far away from his chair as he can make a call. But he's spot on. Both players have two challenges remaining. Two points from two sets all. Oh. 
Neil, that other quarterfinal tonight, Murray and Nadal, the winner of that will meet the winner of this, and look what has happened in the last hour plus. Roddick was down two sets to Marin Cilic and suffering through a shoulder injury and somehow has pulled his game together, altered his game plan, not so much power but more quick points. And here at 5-2 in the fourth, he is at set point. Won the third set, 6-3. Won the first five games of this fourth set, breaking Chilich three times as Chilich, while Roddick picked up his game, the young Croat had uh, his level of play drop dramatically, has won the last two games, Chilich, but here's Roddick, set point. And it'll go to the signing to set. What a courageous rally by the injured Andy Roddick. He's leveled the match at two sets all as we go back to Sports Center and stand. Back live in Melbourne. 6.15 on Australia Day. We're racing for a fifth set. Andy Roddick battling back, winning the third and fourth set. Brad, a fascinating match here for Chilich now. It is more about where he is mentally and physically than Roddick. What's the bigger challenge? Is it the body? This will be the 19th set that he's played this week, or is it the brain? The mind? I think it's the brain. I mean, the body because he's still young, but the, the mind can affect the body more than anything. And this has been fascinating. You know, we said after the first set that Andy Roddick was too passive. We said after the second set that he was too passive. He had to start playing aggressive. And since the end of the second set, you know, since maybe the little bit of an injury, Andy Roddick has started to play much more aggressive tennis. He's taken much more risk with his backhand. He's cracked some ret returns, hit his serve. He's playing beautifully. And conversely, Marin Cilic has started to play incredibly passive. He's making nervous errors. And quite a few times when he was running around that forehand in the first set, he was cracking it. You saw many times he's running around that backhand and pushing the forehand and opening up the backhand down the line. I mean, advantage Andy Roddick right now. He seems to be the bolder of the two players. We creeped out if you haven't watched this. It was Cilic the first set in a tie break. And Roddick treated early in the second set by the trainer couple of times the rub down the maximum that the uh, rules would allow and Chilich was running away with it in two sets in the third set Brad you saw Roddick began to hit the forehand finally yeah he's starting to flatten out the forehand that's what we were thinking he needed to do in the first set and look at him just crack that return we did not see that early in this match Chilich meanwhile the movement really dropping is it because the brain is seizing up or do you think he's wearing down yeah and there's no question I think at the end of the second set a lot of you know maybe Chilich was thinking is Roddick done is he going to be you know is he walking off no he's not he's got a lot left in the tank and you know Andy Roddick's fit he's got a lot of heart and you know it he's very close to the finish line the way Chilich is playing Chilich has a seven and five career record in five setters he's already played 12 in his young career including the win over Del Potro Roddick actually under 500 in his career and trying to rally from two sets down for the first time in more than six years. Can he get the crucial Thank break you. to open the fifth? It's love 30 mm -hmm. back inside to Dick and Mary. <laughs> and Roddick has earned the first two points as Chilich serves to open this final set. Roddick 12 and 14 and five setters in his career and Chilich amazingly at 21 already with 12 five set matches seven and five. And here's Roddick with three chances right off the start of this set to take the lead. This is what he's done in the last two sets. Broken Chilich in his first game of the set. And took it on to level this match. Brad is right on. Fascinating. 15. Roddick acting as though that serve was long took a late swipe at it two more break points this is the, the, the fans now are reacting to Roddick the way the US Open fans reacted to Jimmy Connors in his 91 run down to Aaron Christie looked like he had no chance of coming back It doesn't matter what part of the world you're watching this great sport, you can recognize the, the fighting spirit, and Roddick has brought that today. 
another break point. Well, just the, the amount of problem solving he's done today is very impressive. Oh, uh, big forehand from Chilich. He's out of love 40. Yes. Yes. Going for those returns is what got Roddick back into the match. Misfires there. Much more spirited shot making from Chilich. What a save out of Love 40. That was big. And going back to the end of that fourth set with Roddick serving for a six love set and Chilich able to break and hold his own serve, win a couple of games indeed. That may have provided a foundation for him to play the kind of tennis we saw the first two sets. He certainly did out of love 40 there. It, it sure would be nice if in this final set that, that both men played their best. Chilich has had big wins on the big stages before. He beat Fernando Gonzalez here two years ago. He beat Andy Murray in the fourth round of last year's U.S. Open. He beat Del Potro here in five tough sets that went more than four and a half hours. But can he go back to back with big wins? Roddick's play has improved at the net as well in the last couple of sets. He's got to get rid of that forehand return, though. Chilich knows the first ball is going there. Roddick's going there time and time again on the juice court, so to poke that ball back, that doesn't send a great message across to Andy. On that second serve. Defense to offense for Chilich. There's a tough little period here for Andy. When you're down two sets to love, you can let it go and you feel like you're probably out of the match. And now that he's got himself back to two sets all and you feel like you can see the finish line, he's sort of playing against what he normally does. He's got to try to keep forcing himself. Keep playing the tennis that got him back into this match. Sort of goes against his instinct. He'll take that free point. Again, his serve percentage, 70% for serve, has been a measuring stick. When he gets 70, he usually wins. He's 63% today. The first serve to start that point. He holds one all. 
Big props also to Andy's box, who have been very supportive from the second set on. They've constantly spoken to him, trying to pump him up, keep him focused. Larry Stefanke and Doug Spreen done a great job. You never hear that stuff from Bob Brett, do you, Darren? No, he's pretty quiet, he's isn't real, he? real, real quiet. Much but more sure, effusive I'm, is Larry. Yeah, I'm sure there's a reassurance, though, when Chilich looks up to Bob Brett. Oh, absolutely. Bob keeps everything pretty close to his necktie. Even on a practice court. Wander over, murmur some stuff, and then walk away. Not exactly a quote machine, Bob Brett. Like sustain the background. I'm sure he'd like to see Marin Tillich back in the foreground. He was so good up there for the first couple of sets, wasn't he? 50 mm -hmm. Absolutely. Trip. Chilich handled a real tricky bounce on that point. Just getting a little late to these shots now, isn't he, Martin Chilich? He must be seeing them a little late. He's moving to them a little bit late. He's not hitting as cleanly as he was in the beginning. The wizened red. <laughs> studying his man. Do you know how many people in Australia wish Bob Brett would move back here and coach the Aussie Juniors? He's been gone a long time. They wouldn't mind if a guy named Darren Cahill joined him. We wouldn't like that. We want him with us, but uh, there has been a lot of talk about all the the coaches that have left Australia and are helping others to become successful in this sport. Brett and Cahill being two of those. Oh. That's just, look at that. He's get throwing in so many second serves. And Roddick is getting such a good crack at him. He's just got to beef up this first serve percentage. It's still at 48%. One all, 30 all, final set. Chelich hits the line in that point, away with a 2-1 lead on serve. Now we're commercial free here in the final set, so it's all tennis to the finish line as we move forward toward the semifinals of the championship. Let's take a look at our Lexus innovative thinking. We go out to doubles, Venus and Serena Williams. Now they won entire championships without dropping a set. Venus and Serena. They had to they had to work hard out there. There's quite a bit of innovation. 
position in this rally alone. <laughs> Spectacular point, our Lexus innovative thinking point. Well, yeah, what do you think about this one? The fifth set. Roddick had a chance early at three break points. Chilich low 40, but the 21 year old dug out of that problem spot, has held, and it's 1 2. Thank you. Thank you. High stakes final set. Love 30. Look who's back. Love 30. Very hard worker, Bob Brett says, is Marin Chilich. Very heady player. That was too bad for Andy as well. He took that slice back in the wrong way. You've got to take that cross court to close off the angles. Love 30 chance for Chilich. Brett said Chilich, right from the start, had very good court sense. Didn't have any power, though. Let's see if he's got any power left in fifth. His movement is back. A huge hole for Roddick to try to dig his way free. Love 40, just as Chilich had Love 40 facing him to open this final set. And then ran off five straight points. Lots of air traffic today on this holiday parades and flyovers. Alpus. Late call, but apparently a correct one. Chilich wants proof. Well long. Fifteen forty. One break point saved by Roddy. who has only 11 aces, and we're in the fifth set. Serving 62%, well under his normal performance. to a little of his old forehand there, wrapping the racket around the ball and mishitting three or four forehands during that game. And then 
That's where that forehand gets a little bit spinny. If you don't have the perfect timing, you get a lot of miss hits. And you can drop the ball short. It's like watching three different matches all in one. What we're seeing of Chilich here in the fifth set is what he offered in the first and second sets. Then Roddick, shoulder injury and all, comes rallying back in the third and fourth set. Taking chances, cracking winners. Chilich playing very poorly. Had a low drop in his level of play, and now he's called upon his best stuff. This is the man that we saw build that two set lead. At 21, trying to work his way into his first ever semifinal in a major. 15. This is such a big game for Marin. Consolidate this service break. Then he comes around at 4 1, possibly, and has two games with the breeze. And the breeze is picking up slightly. This game, this set, Mary, is so remindful of the way the match began. Yes, exactly right. He's got his feet under him again, Chilich. It's such an important part of this comeback for him. His energy level is back up again. Let's face it, he holds serve a couple of more times. He's in the semis. And if he can recover after those will be gone sets if he can come back from two sets up <laughs> if he can come back from ahead that's pretty good for a 21 year old in his third five setter of this tournament coming back from two sets down is, is tough Coming back from two sets up is, in some ways, even tougher. Meanwhile, for Roddick at his end, all that hard work to get it to this final set, rallying from two sets down. Now you're down a break, and your opponent's serving for a 4-1 lead here in the final set. You're not getting the help with... Shots being sprayed all over this place that Chile gave uh, Roddick sets three and four. But there's one. His 49th unforced error in the match. Roddick with 48. Chile with 15 more winners. Amcic thought, or Cilic thought he had his 16th ace. Roddick thought he there was a phony let on his serve as well. Yeah, Roddick was shaking his head there. There's no way that was a let. That cleared the net by six inches. Is there not that buzzer device on the net cords? Yes, here? absolutely. They can be really sensitive at times, though. So much for that. It's finally out of the 50% mark in this final set. I, it, he was somehow able to gather himself up, husband his strength in this last set. And Roddix, he hasn't, he's only served a couple of games, but that doesn't look too good. 
And another race for Chelich. He leads four games to one in the final set. But just up a single break. But feels time running though, out. It? Yeah, it does. Feels it bigger. does. Well, they've called out the week, and now we're down to the final eight. This is the first of the quarterfinal matches, and there's the whole lineup. Federer, Davidenko. Curious uh, match that, as Davidenko has beaten Federer the last two times they play. Djokovic and Sanga. Boy, how good will that be? And Murray Nadal tonight, you'll see. That's just a delicious menu of quarterfinal matches. Now Roddick knows well he has to hold. He's got two more chances to break Chilich if he can take care of his business on his serve. Now it's amazing how quickly it changes as well because now it's Chilich that is playing with house money. And you can have a little freedom in this Roddick service game and see if you can get one of these first two points and put some pressure on Roddick. If he breaks here, the match is done. And again, the surprising statistic is the fact that Chilich has out aced Roddick 17 to 11. Roddick just not earning those easy ace points that he relies on in so many of his matches and gets. Good defense from Chilich. And also sitting on that wine swinging serve in the juice court and not pushing it back. He's hitting that return now, and that's a huge difference. Another let call that Roddick disagreed. I thought we'd lost him. Constructed point by Chilich. Two great points with it. Hard to believe he's 21. Under the pressure of this final set against one of the great players in the game with so much ahead, he's never been to a major semifinal and produce a point like that. Roddick faces yet another break point. How did he get that back? And then misses the backhand. Yes. Yes.
uses that slider to produce his 12th ace. to the service line before that forehand came yes. ripping back at him. A 26 mile an hour ace is fastest today, almost 137. And another big serve. 4 2. We're approaching the hour of 7 o'clock on this Tuesday. Australia Day holiday here in Melbourne and throughout this country. This tennis championship coming to a full boil in the second semifinal for the men tonight. Scheduled to start in 45 minutes. You'll see it live here on ESPN 2, 3.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Thank you. As Andy Murray and Rafael Nadal, defending champion, will be paired on this court. Right now it's Maren Cilic. Two points, two uh, games from the semifinals, his first ever in a major. Got it. Oh, just wide. That would have been sitting some right. shot. I'm sitting right on the net. I could see straight away that was going to pop over, but just falling wide. So close. Thank you. Mm. Oh. Double fault. I was about to say that Chile is serving so much better in this final set. 80% for <laughs> serves. Eighty percent first serve success, sixty-three percent, but that's way above his level of the entire match. Still on the match, forty-nine percent. Oh. His sixth double fault in the previous point, fifteen all, and now Chilich thinks he has an ace. Challenge, second serve. Wow, that looked like a double fault. One challenge left for Chilich and a 15-30 opportunity for Roddick. And he knows this guy showed a few nerves when he was up two sets to love. Thank you. Thank you. Pounds that ace home. 18th of the match. Maybe a long way, but it's only six points to the semifinals for this young Croat. Maybe a long way, but it's only six points to the semifinals for this young Croat. Oh. 
made that look easy. I'll tell you what, Dick, the sun has just disappeared. It feels like it's dropped by about 15 degrees here in Rod Labor Arena, and all of a sudden it feels like conditions have become a little bit heavy. It's been a major change, and the wind has also picked up. Please. Does that favor either of these two? I think it favors Chilich. It's going to be a little harder for Roddick to hit through him, like he was doing in sets three and four. How about Murray and Nadal tonight? Boy, haven't even thought about that one yet. <laughs> Get back to you on that. Chance for Chilich to take a 5-2 lead. Back to Deuce. So impressed by the way Andy's hit his forehand today on the run. That normally is a ball that he hits cross-court with a lot of spin and leaves it short and leaves it hanging. He's really flattened out that forehand beautifully since the second set. Good serve wide, opens the court. Another game point for 5-2. Chilich, a game away from the semis. Chris and Brad uh, watching with full interest. Uh, your reaction there, BG? To me, you know, Andy went away from what he did really well in the third and fourth set by bringing the wood. And I think that really rattled Anchin. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Chilich, the wrong Croatian. And, and you know what? Then when he had him early in the fifth set, he went back to doing what he did in the, in the first set is, is being, you know, passive. And I think he thought that Chilich was going to go away, and that's what his instinct is, to be a little bit of a conservative player. But he needed to go to that aggressive play. If he continued to play aggressive, I think he would have had Chilich being completely rattled. He let him off the hook, and Chilich has taken advantage. How about Chilich shaking off the miss there? It would have given him a virtual match point. Get break point at 4-1, miss that backhand by an inch. Pretty impressive hold for 5-2, and we'll see if, if Roddick can prolong this this classic match. Take back to you guys. Another point is uh, starting this final set that Roddick had Chilich in a hole love 40 and couldn't produce the break that would have continued the momentum from the third and fourth sets. But here it is Roddick trying to extend this final set and put the pressure on Chilich to serve it out. Still four less than Chilich. The 
four most important points in young Marin Cilic's life. Four points to advance him to the semifinals of the Australian Open, the first major of this season. How heavy will that racket be? Great start. 20th ace. Mm. Well, you couldn't return a ball better than Roddick did, and Chillick still got it back. Roddick eventually with a point, 30-15. Thank you, thank you. This may be a challenge with hope. He might as well. If it's on the line, it's two match points. Thank you. 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 